because I was very new um, into the whole insomnia scene, and um, I literally what I do, I put my name down for everything. So they normally have out, they they send out an email um, showing you what activities are available for a creator, and you can put your name down to enter and stuff. So last insomnia, I think it was in October or something. Uh, it was before, a few months before Tekken 8 came out. They had a creator tournament for Tekken 8. You could put your name down as a creator and they'd have like a, a few rounds of a, uh, I think it's like a three round tournament. So it's not a huge one, but it was a chance to play Tekken 8 before it came out. So being a creator does give you chances like that. But it also depends which insomnia you go to and what's happening at the time you're going to. So um, there aren't any real like big games coming out during this period of the year. Because um, most big games usually come out in February-ish and then it's sort of a dry period until we get to the summer and autumn is when the really big holiday season games come out in November, December time. So uh, this Insomnia doesn't really anything like that um, Tekken Creator Tournament, which was like the big centre thing of I-71. But they did have a lot of things that you can do as a creator. If you do go, if you happen to be not just a streamer, but if like you're a YouTuber, cosplayers as well, um, it's not just down to streaming. So you can get creative passes just for a variety of different things really so people who do stuff on just tiktok um instagram reels um a lot of it is cosplay like it's a very strong um presence when it comes to cosplay as well because they have obviously cash prizes for winners in the masquerade and such so if you do go to see the masquerade i think it's one of the few conventions where i do try and make the masquerade purely because the cosplays you'll see are going to be fucking amazing because those people are competing for a cash prize so you know they're putting the effort in and um, you'll see some really amazing performances because it's not just having a detailed costume or whatever, it's actually being able to perform on stage in front of a big crowd and be able to wow people essentially. So those are one of the reasons probably why they do create a pass is that Insomnia because they have activities and stuff. But also it generates content that will also promote them for the next one. Um, one of the big examples being this, t well last time I went, I did some... Um, what's it called streaming in the streaming booth so they had like a podcast stage and a streaming booth i put my name down for both got both i did a q a session with tori last time and we also did like a just chatting stream the other time as well um essentially yeah streaming from insomnia at the event get some promotion as well that's one of the ways to get um the name out there another thing they did i did they didn't do it last time but they did it this time and i'm hoping they do it again is they gave creators a code to give their communities for a discount on tickets as well. They left it a little late this time, so by the time I gave my code out, a lot of people who are going to Insomnia had already bought the tickets because they gave it at the end of January. So literally the month, we had like a month before the actual event happened and most people already bought the tickets by then. I wish they'd given it out earlier. Purely because then more people would be able to benefit from it. And um, that's something I thought was really cool. And I, think, I hope they do that again. But one thing I did this time, I, I did the IRL Life Size D and D event where they do this at other conventions as well. Um, I know they do it at MegaCon. I think they're doing it at MCM conventions. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that one. Uh, I know they that there was a flyer I had here somewhere. I can't find it now. I must have thrown it away or something or dropped it. Uh, but they did have a list of conventions they go to. I know MegaCon was definitely one of them because they were at the previous one. But essentially, they give you like a. Uh, a, a few props and costumes to choose from uh, they have pre-made character sheets and it's it's two parties as well so you have two dms two different parties and you go through um literally why the white says on it's a life-size dnd session very beginner friendly they talk you through the whole thing you have giant dice to roll around um they have big cutouts for tokens which looked really good the set design was also really well done as well I think the experience was just about an hour and a half-ish. Uh, I know we only got to do an hour of it because we had to get hurried out because the NEC was closing. So we didn't get to do the final boss battle of our campaign-ish. But um, it was generally a fun time. Uh, what I like to do whenever I do go as a creative insomnia is I do want to put my name down for as many different things as I can and be as involved in the whole thing as possible. Uh, that's, the whole, that's part of the reason why I like going as a creator, right? Because you get given opportunities you wouldn't otherwise get and I want to make sure I get the most out of it. Um, one of the main ones they give is the chance to go to the creator social. Um, I think it was on the Friday night where you can actually meet industry people from at the top. This night was Ubisoft. I can't remember who it was for I-71. But um, whoever happens to be um, 
sponsoring the event or whatever would normally host a social the last one was at a different bar and it was very cramped and small and very difficult to talk to people this new venue they had was much better like you, they genuinely had like places where you can actually you know talk to people and hear each other and stuff whereas the other one was way too uh, small for that sort of thing but it gives you a chance to meet other people who are streamers instagram creators tiktokers youtubers cosplayers um and industry people like i said in this case it was ubisoft um uh, people reps and normally what people tend to do during the evening of insomnia is if you're not going to if well they go to events like the dark room or the pub quiz or whatever but after that everyone sort of filters into resorts world at the uh, nec and then go to the casino where they have a bar there as well and that's where most of the socializing happens after the event and you know people i'd met earlier that day i actually got a chance to sit down and have a proper conversation with them over there and that was i think probably the highlight of my time there because i got to actually genuinely chat to people get to know them and what they do and i've ended up making a lot of new friends in fact people i didn't expect to um become friends because i realized i met some people who are actually local to where i am as well because we were started we met in passing sort of essentially from a friend of a friend and then like started chatting um and then i casually mentioned that i was local to the area and then he also mentioned then the conversation is completely swerved into you know local creators and so on and the whole building community sort of thing and then stuff that we both had in common um genuinely it's a great way to make friends within the creative space it's something i'd recommend going it's worth going to insomnia just for that in fact yeah 100 worth going to meet people like that if you go to community meetups i know they have cosplay meetups on certain days uh for cosplayers so they have like groups like Baldur's gate 3 groups photo sessions and such it's a great great atmosphere and the best thing i would say about insomnia gaming festival is <laughs> it's kind of depressing to think about it the best thing about it is the value for money you get because the price of the tickets are actually i think it's a lot less than things like megacon and mcm and other big conventions but the amount you get at the event out of the price of that ticket uh, i know i went as a creator this time but i looked at the prices for things and there's obviously they have separate prices i think that's the, re the reason they do have good prices for tickets because they break it down into different things so let's say you go to insomnia for the weekend and that's all you do you just pay for that ticket but if you want to go for the pub quiz or the dark room or any other events those are separate tickets that you buy separately and when you add them all up then it does meet the same price as like mcm london but you're getting a lot more out of it whereas mcm london that is just you know the price of entry to the event is like nearly 100 which is absolutely insane so i think at 100 percent when it comes to value for money, Insomnia probably is currently the best event you can go to. And it's kind of depressing to think about that now, considering how expensive everything has gotten. And on top of that, like things like travel and hotel. The hotels, I think, are the worst because the price gouging they do. So whenever there's an event in London at the um, Excel Centre, the hotels all jack their prices up really high. To the point where sometimes they'll cancel bookings and relist them. Um, I know Airbnb has definitely been infamous for that sort of thing. So I've had people who booked Airbnb like a month or no, sorry, not a month, a year in advance for an event for, and got a good price. And then literally the weekend before the event, their booking gets cancelled and it's relisted for 10 times the price because the host found out that a load of people are looking in the area for that event. And it's kind of gross, but unfortunately you're not protected against that sort of thing when it comes to Airbnb. So yeah, be careful of that if you're ever planning a trip down there. Anyway, I think I've talked about this enough. I should probably play some Baldur's Gate 3. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, like, comment, subscribe, or go over to my live videos and watch me play Baldur's Gate 3. 